the network. Oh, what's up everybody once again it's brand man Sean and this is inside the network an exclusive series where we show you guys clips from inside of brandmannetwork.com not just clips from videos but exclusive artist sessions that we host as well and in this particular clip that you're about to see Corey is talking about how you get on big YouTube pages. And after that, I'm gonna get deeper into music video marketing and content as a whole on YouTube as well. It's the network. Still on the subject of YouTube. Um, if your YouTube channel is like clearly like, you know, it's you just started it or you just don't have a following and like you're seeking um you're seeking like other platforms, what what's like the best way to pitch your YouTube? video to these kinds of platforms um what do you mean like give me give me an example kind of um i don't know like pigeons and planes or like lyrical lemonade like platform you know platforms that post music videos oh okay um well a lot of those channels don't particularly not them in particular but like you know just in general yeah, like channels that post music and post videos from artists and stuff like that a lot of them typically don't really don't care what your subscriber base is um, most of the challenges you're going to run into are going to want one or two things, is one quality content that matches their base or two of your money, like just to be real. It's always one of those two. Either they, they, they have to see that. And sometimes it's both. Sometimes like you have to fit what we do and you have to pay us. Um, but so your subscriber count doesn't really matter a lot more in that space, which when you're starting to grow your channel, I do recommend maybe taking like, 15 or 20 percent of your content and placing it on other places so if you're producing let's say you're doing two videos a month and let's say like two songs a month so it's four pieces of content with two songs and two videos you put in your channel take one of those and get it placed on to one of these smaller channels that's in that same space because just for every lyrical lemonade and no jumper and world star there are 10 channels that post music just like it a lot easier they're a lot more willing to answer your emails. They're a lot more willing to work with you and post something on there. So then you take one of your videos and you place it there from time to time. Once a month, once every other month, however many times you can afford to do it. And what you'll start to see is that the more that you do it, the more familiar that their audience gets with you, the more likely they are to check out your content. And then they start to eventually assume that this channel is covering you because we know like when you dip into marketing, you start to learn that a lot of things is like paying for placements in certain places. Consumers are starting to get a lot smarter about that, but for the most part, they don't know that. So when they see this YouTube channel, he's posting this new song that you drop every other month, they just assume that, oh, this guy must be lit enough that this channel, this channel wants to post it and they go check you out. Um, but yeah, most of them don't, don't, don't mind what your subscriber account is beginning because they want up and coming artists to post on their channels. They just want either, like I said, like you to pay them up front, your content to match them. Some will ask you to let them monetize the video. Like some channels have asked for you, will ask you to give up your monetization rights, which sometimes is worth it, sometimes it's not worth it. Um, sometimes the exposure is more worth it than the $80 you're going to make from the views that the video is going to get. So just kind of think about those things, but don't let having a low subscriber count kind of like deter you from pitching to big channels i was looking at it as like man let them let them tell you no you know like if they don't want to do it they will let you know they don't want to do it but don't think that you can't do it just because you only have you know 100 subscribers or 300 subscribers something like that because their base is a lot more important in that situation anyway it's about how many subscribers do they have you know it's the network all right so now Corey had a lot of great insights when it comes to getting on bigger youtube channels and i can tell you that stuff was spot on but here's some additional things that you can keep in mind especially when we're talking about marketing your music videos because we know the music video is the best way to really interpret you know your music your brand and any other form of lifestyle and expression for your art all at the same time right it's the only medium that allows you to do all of those things as an artist and getting connected with one of these guys because corey mentioned it doesn't have to be these big video channels it could also be some of these smaller ones that are easy to reach out to but a big advantage of that is when you do that as they grow right 
they will still be having a relationship with you. You've already been in contact with them and they're more likely to continue to open your emails and everybody starts somewhere. So you kind of got to A&R the situation and say, hmm, who do I think is going to grow? Who has potential to continue to build and become viral themselves? Because at one point, I am Dante only had a smaller YouTube channel, right? Uh, Zeus had a smaller YouTube channel. Lyrical Lemonade was a smaller YouTube channel at one point. All of these channels were smaller. Right. And you have to get connected with them earlier on. That way you can maintain a relationship and still get those emails actually open. Because I can tell you for a fact, I know people and myself, right, who have connected early on with certain channels and people. And now no one else will get their email open by them. They don't even check their emails, barely at least. And I can still get in contact with them or people I know can get in contact with other channels just from getting connected earlier. So that's a huge, huge, huge thing. Please keep that in mind is investing long term, but these relationships are everything. Now, number two, when it comes to these channels, there's two types of channels that you can really think about. Okay, all of them kind of want quality to some extent, right? You don't want to just be posting a lot of trash because they just aren't going to get the views. But with that being in mind, a lot of them do say, yo, if you're giving me a good check, I'm going to go ahead and take that money and they'll post your stuff. And some of them have quality stuff and they're still going to filter and it doesn't necessarily say, oh, I'm going to lower my barrier for quality, except I'm still going to charge you regardless. And then you have these other channels that they do not take money. They almost get offended if you offer them some money and they just post stuff. Right. They, they post stuff and it's hard to get out to them and they'll, they'll, they'll answer emails a lot of times, but they have flooded emails. Got to keep that in mind. But if they open your email, once they see that your stuff is quality, you're kind of in there and you start to be able to build a relationship by getting multiple posts on that channel. And then, like Corey said, that starts to come across as hey, this channel is promoting you. They rock with you. So I rock with you as a fan of this channel, because those channels, those are the hardest channels to get on. This could be like uh, trap sounds and, and, and promoting sounds and things like that. These channels consider themselves to be curators, like true curators. So that's a completely different business model. And it's more about the brand versus just how some of these other channels are. Hey, I'm trying to finesse and get a check and just trying to build a big following just to build one. Now, here's another tip. A huge thing that people do not realize is just because you post your video on one channel does not mean that you can't post it on your own channel. You can do it in either order. Some people might be pickier where they're like, yo, we want the exclusive. We want you to post there first, but they're not going to prevent you from posting on your channel later. Like the, 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 I don't really see that. This isn't with a being with a record label or one of these other distribution companies where people are looking for any type of exclusivity. You can post on multiple channels. So you get that level of promotion on that channel and then you can still get another level of promotion by getting it posted on another channel. I've seen it and it worked for multiple people. Like it's definitely worked because you still got that audience and that fan base. Keep that in mind. It's something that you can do. Don't get too concerned and caught up thinking like, no, now that I put this video out on this channel, that's it. Like I have one guy who posted his stuff, got 14, 15 K views by posting it through a channel. Later on, he posted it himself and marketed on his page and is doing very well with that as well. As a matter of fact, doing better than that original video at this point. So there's multiple ways that you can go about that. Now, another thing, be mindful of how much you're posting on one particular channel and you want to build up some brand there, but then also watch and determine if you might have hit a ceiling on that channel. Hey, I've, I've milked this for all I can and maybe it's time to move on to another channel. Don't try to spray and pray and do five different channels at once. Try to say, hey, I'm going to hit this channel, milk this a little bit, and maybe now I'm going to milk these two channels at once and then I'm going to move on from them completely and go into another category. That's a strategy to consider because you don't want to just get dry if that channel stops really growing itself. So always keep in mind, don't just make one decision and stick with it forever. You have to continue to read and see what happens as things continue to play out. And that's it for this episode. Once again, this is Inside the Network where we show you exclusive clips and artist sessions from inside brandmannetwork.com. And of course, obviously, we've been talking about moving in your videos on YouTube and getting on big channels, but we also have a great YouTube marketing course within Brandman Network. I can show you just pop up a testimonial on the screen somewhere I'll put it while I talk but just overall remember that this space 
brandmannetwork.com is about developing artists' brands and helping them grow their fan base, but it's doing it from a standpoint of being an ongoing marketing manager for the artists, helping them throughout their process where it's not just a one-off call. We actually get to answer your questions and get context in the same way you can ask us questions we will ask you questions back because we want to drive deep into your particular process figure out what's going on and because we have multiple 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 calls you'll see if you know anybody a part of that system you can ask them just directly how how is it you'll see that we actually get to know from ground up your process. We can give you custom answers because we know your holistic issues and ongoing issues and we can help you predict what the new problems are going to be versus just having a one-off call. So instead of you having to hire a marketing manager, because you might not have a budget for a full-time marketing manager, we can be your marketing mentors and help you manage your entire process throughout your entire process. But once again, that's brandmannetwork.com and this is Inside the Network. Sign yourself because we move different. It's the network. <laughs>